Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. In our small town where everyone knew everyone, things were always the same. The streets were quiet, the people predictable, and there was an unspoken rule about what was normal and what wasn't. My name is Evelyn, and I lived in this town with my son Max, a thoughtful and sensitive teenager. But lately, I noticed something was bothering him, something he couldn't quite express. Each day, as I got ready for work, I saw Max's eyes linger on my dresses and makeup. At first, I thought it was just curiosity, but it was more than that. His gaze was filled with a sort of longing, a quiet wish for something he couldn't have. I realized then my son was struggling with who he was, with the person he was expected to be and the person he felt like inside. I remember the day I decided to address it. It was a Saturday and we were both at home. I found Max sitting in his room, his eyes lost in thoughts. Max, I began cautiously, I've noticed you looking at my dresses and makeup. Is there anything you want to talk about? He looked up, surprise and a hint of fear in his eyes. After a moment of silence, he whispered, I don't feel right, Mom. When I look at myself, I don't see who I really am. His words were heavy, filled with an emotion I couldn't fully grasp. I sat next to him, trying to understand. What do you mean, Max? He hesitated, then spoke softly. I don't feel like a boy, Mom. I, I feel different. I feel like I should be a girl. His voice trembled, revealing the turmoil inside him. Hearing this, my heart ached for him. I knew our town, how people thought and talked. This wasn't something they would accept easily, but he was my son, my child, and I loved him unconditionally. I wanted him to be happy, to be himself, whatever that meant for him. The next few weeks, we spent a lot of time talking. I learned about how Max felt, how he had always felt different, like he didn't fit into the mold the world had set for him. These conversations weren't easy. There were tears, fears, and a lot of uncertainty. But through it all, I saw my child in a new light, with a courage and honesty that left me in awe. One evening, while we were cleaning up after dinner, I turned to him. Max, would you like to try on one of my dresses, just to see how it feels? I suggested, watching his reaction carefully. His eyes widened, a mix of surprise and hope flickering in them. Really, can I? He asked, almost in disbelief. I smiled encouragingly. Of course you can. Let's find one that you like. We went to my room and I opened my wardrobe. Max's eyes roamed over the dresses, his fingers gently touching the fabrics. Finally, he picked a simple flowery dress. It was nothing fancy, just a casual dress I wore on weekends. But to Max, it was more than that. It was a chance to see himself in a new way. As he tried it on, I could see the transformation in his expression. There was a sense of rightness, a fit that went beyond the physical. He looked at himself in the mirror, and for the first time in a long time, I saw a glimpse of happiness, a hint of peace in his eyes. That night, we talked about what this meant for us, for our future. I knew it wouldn't be easy. In a town like ours, people were quick to judge, quick to condemn anything different. But as a mother, my first and only concern was Max's happiness. We decided to take things slow, to figure out this path together. I promised to support him, to stand by him no matter what. We agreed to keep this between us for now, to protect him from the harsh words and judgments of our small town. But inside our home, Max was free to explore this new aspect of himself. As I watched him sleep that night, curled up in his bed with a peaceful expression, I made a silent vow. I would do whatever it took to help my son, to support him in finding his happiness. This was just the beginning, and I knew there would be challenges ahead. But we would face them together, as a family. Because in the end, that's what mattered most. After that night, things started to change slowly in our house. Max, who now liked to be called Mia when he wore dresses, was smiling more. We kept our little secret just between us. I knew we had to be careful. In our small town, people might not understand, and I wanted to protect Mia. One Saturday, I suggested we go shopping. Let's pick some clothes for you, Mia. Clothes that you feel happy in, I said. 
We had to be discreet, so we drove to a town a bit far away where no one would recognize us. In the car, Mia was quiet, her hands clasped tightly in her lap. I could tell she was nervous, but excited too. It's okay to be nervous, I reassured her. We'll just take our time and find what makes you happy. We walked into a store that had all kinds of clothes. Mia's eyes were wide as she looked at the rows of dresses, skirts, and blouses. She touched the fabrics gently, as if they were precious. I helped her pick a few things. A soft pink blouse, a skirt with flowers, and a dress that was light blue. Mia's face lit up as she tried them on. She twirled in front of the mirror, her smile brighter than I'd seen in a long time. Then we found a small makeup section. I showed Mia how to choose the right shades. We picked a light lipstick, some blush, and eyeshadow. I wasn't an expert, but I remembered my own mother teaching me, and now I was passing it on to Mia. When we got home, we spent the afternoon experimenting with the makeup. I showed Mia how to apply lipstick and blush, how to make her eyes stand out with the eyeshadow. We laughed a lot, especially when I made a mistake and had to start over. Mia was a fast learner, her hands steady as she tried each step. The next challenge was hair. Mia's hair was short, like most boys in our town. I wasn't sure how to make it look more like a girl's, but I had an idea. How about we try a wig, I suggested. Mia's face lit up. That would be awesome, Mom. We ordered a wig online, something that looked natural. When it arrived, Mia tried it on, and it was like she transformed right in front of me. The wig was long and a bit wavy, a nice brown color that matched her eyes. Mia looked in the mirror and touched the wig softly, her expression full of wonder. In the evenings after dinner, our house turned into a place where Mia could be herself. She would wear her new clothes, put on a bit of makeup, and we'd sit and talk. Sometimes we'd watch a movie or I'd read to her, just like when she was little. But now, it was different. Mia was finding little pieces of happiness, little moments where she could be who she really felt like inside. But outside our home, Mia had to pretend to be Max. It was hard for her. I could see it in her eyes when she put on her boy clothes for school. It was like she was putting on a costume, a mask to hide who she really was. I wished things could be different, that we lived in a place where Mia could be herself all the time. But for now, we had to be careful. Every night, as I tucked Mia into bed, I felt a mix of emotions. I was happy to see her finding joy in her new clothes and makeup, in her new name. But I was also scared. Scared of what people would say, scared of how they might treat her if they knew. Still, no matter what, I promised myself I'd always be there for her. I'd protect her, support her, and help her through this. She was my child, and I loved her no matter what. As days passed, Mia grew more and more comfortable being herself at home. She would spend hours trying different styles with her clothes and practicing makeup. Sometimes she would just sit in front of the mirror, wearing her wig and smiling at her reflection. But outside our house, things were not as easy. Our little town was the same as always. Quiet streets, people who knew each other, and lots of rules about what was normal. Mia knew she had to be Max outside, and it was hard for her. Every morning as she got ready for school, I could see the sadness in her eyes when she took off her wig and put on boy clothes. One day as we were having breakfast, Mia looked up from her cereal. Mom, what if someone finds out about me? She asked, her voice small. I took her hand, wanting to make her feel better. We'll be careful, Mia, and no matter what happens, I'll always be here for you. But deep down, I was worried too. In a town like ours, people didn't understand things like this. I hoped we could keep Mia's secret safe. Then there was a day that I'll never forget. Mia and I were walking back from the grocery store when we saw our neighbor, Mrs. Johnson. She was always very nosy and liked to talk a lot. As we walked past her, she stopped us. Hello, Evelyn. Hello, Max, she said, looking at us closely. Max, you're looking different these days. Something about you. I can't quite put my finger on it. I felt my heart beat faster. Was she suspecting something? I smiled and tried to act normal. Oh, you know kids, they change so fast. We're just heading home now. Have a nice day, Mrs. Johnson. We walked away quickly, and once we were home, Mia was very quiet. Do you think she knows? She asked, 
looking worried. I hugged her. I don't think so, Mia, but we need to be careful. The next few weeks, we were extra careful. Mia only dressed up at home in her room, and we made sure the curtains were always closed. But even with all this, Mia was happy. She loved the time we spent together, trying out new hairstyles or watching movies. One evening, as we were sitting in the living room, Mia said something that surprised me. Mom, I wish I could go outside like this, just for a little while. I thought about it. It was risky, but I wanted Mia to be happy. Maybe we could go for a drive, I suggested, just around the block, late in the evening when there are fewer people. Mia's face lit up. Really? Can we? That night, after it got dark, we went for a drive. Mia wore her favorite dress and the wig. She was so happy, just looking out the window, seeing the world while being her true self. We didn't go far, just around a few streets, but it meant so much to her. When we got back home, Mia hugged me tightly. Thank you, Mom, she said, her voice full of happiness. As time went on, Mia grew more and more confident in her new identity at home. She was like a different person, happy and full of life when she was Mia. But I knew there was more we could do to help her feel comfortable all the time, not just at home. And one day, while we were having tea in the kitchen, Mia looked at me with a serious expression. Mom, can we talk about doctors and stuff, like to help me be Mia all the time? I knew this talk was coming. I had done some research, learning about doctors who could help kids like Mia. Yes, Mia, we can talk about that. There are doctors who understand and can help. We found a doctor in a big city, far from our town. This doctor was kind and knew a lot about kids who felt like Mia did. We went for a visit, driving a long way to see him. Mia was nervous, holding my hand tightly in the waiting room. The doctor was very nice. He talked to Mia, asking her questions about how she felt. He explained things to us about hormones, special medicine that could help Mia's body look more like how she felt inside. Mia listened carefully, her eyes wide. Can I really do that, Mom? She asked me. I nodded, squeezing her hand. If that's what you want, Mia, we can do that. So we started visiting the doctor regularly. He gave Mia hormone medicine, which she had to take every day. It was a big step for her. Slowly, we started to see changes. Mia's skin became softer, and her face started to look different, more like the girl she felt she was. But it wasn't just her outside that was changing. Mia seemed happier, more herself. She would often look in the mirror, touching her face gently, a smile on her lips. Then we talked about something even bigger surgery. It was a way to help Mia's body match how she felt inside completely. It was a big decision, and we talked a lot about it. The doctor explained everything to us, how the surgery would work, and what Mia could expect. Mia thought about it for many days. I want to do it, Mom, she finally said. I want to be fully Mia. I hugged her. Okay, Mia, we'll do whatever you need. I'm here for you. The day of the surgery came months later. It was a big hospital in the city, and I was with Mia the whole time. I held her hand as they took her to the surgery room, telling her I loved her and that everything would be okay. After the surgery, Mia had to stay in the hospital for a few days. I stayed with her, sleeping in a chair by her bed. When she woke up, she was in pain, but she was also brave. I did it, Mom, she said with a weak but happy smile. I smiled back, tears in my eyes. You did, Mia, you're so brave. Recovery took time. Mia had to rest a lot and go back to the doctor for checkups, but every day she got a little better. And every day I saw her becoming more and more the person she was meant to be. Finally, Mia was ready to go back to our town. She was nervous but also excited. What if people notice I'm different? She asked me. I squeezed her hand. We'll handle it together. You're my daughter, Mia, and I'm proud of you. When we got home, Mia looked in the mirror, her eyes shining. She was Mia now, all the time. And she was beautiful. After everything, Mia and I returned to our small town. It was the same town, with the same quiet streets and the same people. But for Mia, it was like a whole new world. She was Mia now, all the time. And she was happy. The first few days back, Mia was a bit nervous. She was different now, and she didn't know how people would react. But she was also excited to finally be herself. We walked together to the grocery store one afternoon, Mia wearing her favorite dress. 
It was a sunny day, and Mia seemed to shine just as bright. People in the store noticed her, some of them looking a bit confused. They knew Max, but Mia was new to them. Our neighbor, Mrs. Johnson, was at the store too. She saw Mia and stopped, her eyes wide. Evelyn, who is this lovely young girl? She asked. I smiled, putting my arm around Mia. This is Mia, Mrs. Johnson. She's my daughter. Mrs. Johnson looked surprised, but then she smiled. Well, Mia, you are a beautiful girl, she said. Mia blushed and thanked her. As we walked back home, Mia was beaming. Mom, she didn't even recognize me, Mia said, laughing. I laughed too. You're a new person, Mia, and a wonderful one at that. Life in our town went on. Mia started going to school again, and at first it was a bit hard. Some kids didn't understand, and they weren't always nice. But Mia was strong, and she had friends who stood by her, and every day it got a little bit easier. We kept seeing the doctor in the city, making sure Mia stayed healthy and happy. Sometimes Mia would get sad, thinking about how things used to be. But then she would look in the mirror, see herself, and her smile would come back. Mia and I spent a lot of time together. We would go for walks, cook dinner, and talk about everything. Mia loved to talk about her dreams for the future, about all the things she wanted to do. One evening, as we sat in the living room, Mia said something that made me really proud. Mom, I want to help other kids like me. I want them to know it's okay to be themselves. I hugged her. That's a wonderful idea, Mia. You're going to do great things. And I knew she would. Mia had come so far. She was brave, kind, and full of love. She had faced a lot of challenges, but she had come through them all. Mia was my daughter, and I was so proud of her. She had shown me what it means to be true to yourself, to be brave, and to face the world with your head held high. Our little town was still the same in many ways, but Mia was happy. She was herself, and that was all that mattered. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.